Hi, this is Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter. And we're here today interviewing Maurice Dunbar, who is running for the new Chittenden 23 House District. We've invited all of the candidates, um, and so far, Ray Garifano has declined. So, Maurice, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running. Well, uh, I am originally from New Hampshire. I came here um, to go to nursing school. I'm a registered nurse now, and, uh, and over the years of a lot of multicultural traveling and running my own small service business, and um, many years of just being involved in the community, um, I became somewhat politically involved, and I am running now because I'm especially concerned for the future, the future generations. Um, there are a lot of signs of difficulty, as I think most people recognize, and um, we need to, I'm running to, for their sakes primarily. Crime is spreading in Vermont like it never has. The economy is sinking. We're in major debt in this state. And uh, right now the federal government is helping us tremendously, but that's not guaranteed to continue. Uh, our taxes only cover a very small portion of, uh, of what we actually need. The, the, the total budget of Vermont is $8 billion. $8 billion for our little state. And we get six billion from the federal government. Our taxes can only support the very little bit that's left over. And uh, and what happens when that stops? When the help from the federal government stops? You know, um, there's there are just a multitude of problems. I think schools have become a real issue. What do you see as the problem with education in Vermont and? What would be your plan to help with that? Well, I think one quick way to explain that is that as soon as um, the Zoom came on during the COVID days and parents could see what was being taught their children, many, many left the public schools to put their children in private schools. Do you have um, statistics on that? No, okay. but I've heard from people in the know right. and from a lot of parents that switch their children and, and that uh, private schools are very busy right now, all of them. Yeah. There's a concern about uh, social issues being taught in school. Um, the, the uh, schools are supposed to be for learning, math, science, English, the typical education that we've had in the past. But now there's an undue focus on social issues, um, uh, social injustice. Uh, now we're talking about social and emotional learning. Yes, uh, the, there is no specific course on critical race theory or uh, trans agendas or there's no particular class but it's incorporated into all of the classes and children are more confused these days than they they ever have it's been known that a lot of white children are going home crying because they're white because they've been told they're supremacists and uh, then the other children are victims. Is there evidence of that or is it anecdotal? No, there's evidence. The, the, the major evidence is that uh, math and English scores across the board have gone way down from years ago, way down. There's no real, very little real education anymore. And I don't mean to make teachers or people upset. I appreciate all the work that the teachers do. Many have left because it became overwhelming during COVID, but, um, but there's just too much of a, a, an agenda on this social emotional teaching. With the rates of depression and suicide 
among that age group mm -hmm. um, continuing to rise, what can the schools do then to help with the emotional aspects of growing up? Well, I, thank you for bringing that up. I totally agree that these issues exist in school. Sometimes there are home situations that require further help in school, and I'm all for supporting them, but the focus of schools is, must remain learning, real learning, so that we can excel on, on uh, classroom scores again. But for the children that, or the students that need the extra help, there are counselors, and I think that um, uh, the extra medical help should come in to, to assist with these students. Uh, the students should be spotted for having emotional problems and given as much help as is possible. There's a need for addressing these particular situations, absolutely. But what I'm just saying is that the focus of learning should not be on the, it's, it seems to be an agenda that's spreading across the United States. Housing affordability. Well, uh, we do need more housing. Um, people are moving in droves to this state to escape situations in other states, so we need housing. And we need affordable housing, and I would do whatever is possible Building is not my forte, but I would certainly be willing to look at all the options and do what's possible. There is one thing that I think needs to be looked at, and, that's, and it's been looked at a lot, which is Act 250. It's been analyzed and revisited and looked at again, but I think it needs looking at again. We do need to encourage land conservation, which was the point of Act 250. But some of the ideals that were established in that bill were, are a little bit old-fashioned now. We do need to open up things and decrease the legislation so that the costs for the contractors become a little bit less and, and therefore the buildings a little bit less. And uh, um, we do need more housing and I would do whatever is necessary to provide for that. Um, other than what we've already talked about, what do you feel are the most important issues facing Vermonters today? I believe that the economy is at the top. The economy, we're spending far more than we can afford and have for a long time. There's been a supermajority for 48 years in Montpelier and every single wish, or at least a majority, Every single wish on their votes get passed. And it's time to look at our wallets. At home, we don't spend any more than we can afford. And if we do, then we're, we have to pay dearly. I think crime is becoming really rampant in Vermont. We have people pulling out knives and guns in a way that we've never seen here. One of the biggest revamping should be in the Global Solutions Warming Act. There are a lot of anticipated expenses with that act by itself that are causing even the, the elected board to make, to implement these things, to, causing them to, to say this is not going to work. Can you go into a little more detail for people who might not know what that Global Solutions Act is? Oh, good act question, is? yeah, thank you. That is, in essence, the, the uh, carbon tax. Okay. But it covers a whole lot more ground. It covers uh, it, uh, mandating electric cars by a certain date. I think it's uh, 2035. It's mandating electricity for all our homes, mandating everything to be electric. And at the same time, in the, in the meantime, those that do have to use fuels um, are going to be heavily taxed. And this hasn't even started yet. So I think the fuel tax is the soonest to come up. And uh, I, I, I think gas taxes are already pretty high. We don't need to add something that's unnecessary. 
Then there's another aspect to it. Vermont, and I mentioned this when I ran two years ago, but I think it needs to be said again. Vermont is one half of one percent, one percent of the total land mass in the world. And the United States as a whole is doing a lot to, uh, to protect the environment and protect global warming or stop it. And we need to have a little chat with China and India who are the biggest pollution perpetrators on earth. So do we really think in Vermont that we need to tax everybody to enough so that everyone moves out of state in order to uh, realize that we can't pay for such a thing? And above that, <laughs> our technology is not there. You know, they're finding out in California as well as severely in Germany that um, our technology cannot, there's not enough electricity to cover all of this. Already in California and in Europe, they are um, asking people and telling people to stop using electricity certain hours of the day in order to, to save the electricity to recharge the electric cars. So it, we're not there yet. I, I believe in it and I think it will come with technology as the years go by, but we are not there yet. We're jumping in too fast before we're capable. You mentioned crime in Vermont. Um, should Vermont build more prisons as opposed to sending prisoners out of state? Well, that's a good question too. Everything costs money, doesn't it? Um, we need severe penalties. What they are, I think, needs discussion, but there have to be severe penalties. And uh, I'm, I know a lot of people won't agree with this, but I'm not opposed, if you kill someone, I'm not opposed to capital punishment. I realize that won't happen around here too soon, but it's, it's getting so bad that the criminals are overwhelming people. They're, they're take, taking cartfuls of goods out of stores and thinking nothing of it, and, and the stores feel that they can't stop them. Are there any other issues that are important to you that you want the voters to know how you feel about? Well, I am pro-life, and aside from all the Roe v. Wade issues, um, well, I do understand that the, the young people feel um, that their rights are being taken away, but they need to look at what this is, really is. And uh, abortion is being done too conveniently these days. We need to recognize what, what uh, an abortion is. This is Heidi with the Essex Retorter, and we've been here today with Maurice Dunbar. Thank you very much for coming, Maurice. Well, thank you for asking.